stable reputation of Nigerian roads as death traps arose mainly from the ever-congested, abused and poorly maintained road network across the country. Before the advent of the President Goodluck Jonathan administration, failed portions of highways and abandoned road projects dotted most parts of the country, while contracts for road construction and maintenance progressed at unbearable slow pace, making road travel a nightmare for Nigerians. Indeed, stories abound of travelers and vehicles conveying goods, sometimes perishable goods, spending days on failed portions of roads across the country. The sheer cost of this to the individual and the economy at large may not have been officially quantified, but one does not need to be a rocket scientist to know that it was a huge dent. However, in just four years of the Good Luck Abella Jonathan administration, road travel has taken a dramatic turn from tales of woes to positive stories of road reclamation to promote the socio-economic growth of the country. The focused, innovative and dynamic leadership of President Goodluck Ebele Jonathan has occasioned this landmark achievement which has become a major symbol of the administration's success. Yet, it is work in progress. In this edition of our series, Jonathan Work in Progress, we focus on the undeniable achievements of the Jonathan administration in creating safe passage for Nigerian road users once again. A road is one component of service delivery to which the people relate directly because it has a multi-purpose value to them. The importance of roads to economic development cannot be overemphasized. The simple free movement of people, goods and services from one location to another is critical for commerce to thrive, let alone the need to evacuate produce from the rural farms to the urban markets. A road is as important as its state. On assumption of office in 2011, President Goodluck Jonathan inherited road network in the country which was in a deplorable state, mainly because of long years of neglect. Vehicle movement around the country was greatly impaired and made difficult by the terrible state of the roads. It got so bad that the National Union of Petroleum and Natural Gas Workers, NUPENG, called its members out on a strike to protest the state of the roads. Their anger was that their drivers were losing their lives in accidents caused by bad roads. This formed the basis for the premium which President Jonathan attached to road rehabilitation and construction in the transformation agenda. The journey here has been very encouraging because uh, when we came here in July 2011, the place was in disarray, let me put it that way. In fact, it is common knowledge then that our roads were in very deplorable condition. And immediately I set out to identify what the issues were. And I found out that we had issues of poor planning and design in the ministry. We had issues with the uh, project management structure in the ministry, which in my professional opinion uh, was not judged towards effective project delivery. Then we had the issue of funding, among others. So for me too, there were areas that, you know, that were in dire need of reform in the sector generally. And so what I set out to do immediately was to first of all get the project management structure right by restructuring the management. It will, it will, it, you know, it will interest you to know that as a ministry, uh, we have responsibility for about 35,000 kilometers of dual carriageway in the country. From the inception of Good Luck Jonathan's administration, there has been a major improvement in repairs of existing roads and the construction of new ones. The Minister of Works, Mike Onolememen, made a solemn pledge in 2013 that those traveling for the end of year festivities would not do so in pains. Indeed, the Jonathan government made good this promise and by 2014, the Federal Roads Maintenance Agency, FERMA, had repaired over 22,500 kilometers of roads and 80 bridges of different lengths, employing and training over 7,000 sure P mobilized youths in the process. What we did was to ramp up construction work in most of our ongoing construction across the country. 
notably among which were the dualization of a major arterial roads in the city political part of the country. Uh, by that I mean ramping up construction activities on the Abuja Lokoja Road, where we successfully, in the year under consideration, 2014, completed the Session 2 of the road. And the Session 1 of the road is also being completed as we speak, and I've been assured that that will be delivered before the end of this year. Then, of course, activities on Session 3 of the road and Session 4 of the road are also ongoing, and the contractors handling those sessions they are leaving those two on turn in order to achieve early completion of the work. The road reclamation program of the Jonathan administration extended to all nooks and cranny of the country, leaving no geopolitical zone out. In the Lagos area, the Apapa Ushudi Express Road and the Tinkan Highway received similar presidential attention. In the first nine months of his administration, it is to the credit of President Goodluck Jonathan that 11 projects were completed. They are the construction of the Vomachok, the Langtang Lalin, the Tunku Shandam Road in Plateau State, as well as the reconstruction of the Gombe Numanyola Road in Adamawa and the Gombe Bypass. Some of the roads rehabilitated are the Abaowiri, Ijabuigbo Ajegunle Araromi Ifeshekona in Ogun State, the Old Oyo Bomosho Road, the Kano Daura Road, May Adwa Road in Katsina, and the Access Road to the Kaduna Refinery. The government also dualized the Onichawiri Road and the Access Road to an airport in River State. The work we are doing on the Lagos Ibadan Aziz construction work has also peaked. This year we are able to drive that construction project decisively and Nigerians are happy that I mean we made business on that alignment. The Kano Meduguri Road sessions one, two and three work is works are ongoing, particularly the sessions around Kano, Jigawa and uh, part of Bauchi State, up to Azare and beyond. Uh, towards Damaturu, but insurgency in the northeast have hampered the progress of work in, the, in Yobe and Borno states, and that is understandable because of the uh, level of insecurity there where the major contractors have lost some engineers. Shortly after, the Jonathan government began some major road projects, which are the dualization, rehabilitation, and outright construction of major trunk roads. Some of them are the Abuja Abaji Lokoja, the Benin Ore Shagamu Highways, and the Maraba Bali Road. 79 roads were completed in this phase, just as work began simultaneously on 81 other roads. They include the rehabilitation of the Ayengba Ajokuta Road in Kogi State, the Lafia Obiawe Tunga Road in Nasarawa, and the outright construction of the Nsuka Obolo Ikom. Kalagu Road, not forgetting the ever busy Lagos Ibadan Expressway. I think, in my own assessment, the work is going on well. If I both at the Shagamo Ibadan session, which is session two, and the Lagos Shagamo session, the work is going on well. In all, we have a total of about 30 kilometers that have been constructed, at least up to the binder. Uh, cost level and that is good for this project. Uh, if you look at the schedule of this work, this work you know is designed to last for 48 months and uh, with what the contractors have done I think we are on course uh, and I want to assure the road user that this project will be delivered even before the estimated completion period because of uh, the improved financing mechanism for the Lagos Ibarra Expressway. So we are very satisfied with what we have seen today and uh, I think I'm more than satisfied uh, in the sense that the work schedule is on course, there is no time lag and the contractors are all, they are firing from all cylinders and uh, with that come the assurance that this road will be delivered on time to Nigeria road users. There is no administration that has in, in, invested 
so much money and attention on the road sector in this country because you can see that all the major dual, dual carriageways in the country are being worked on presently. And there is a proposal to even do more. For example, there's a proposal to dualize from Kefi to Akwanga to Lafia to Makodi. And you have Enugu Potakot going on, you have uh, Benin to Shagambu going on, you have Abuja to Lokoja, Lokoja to Benin, you have Kano to Meduguri, you have Katsina to Katsina State border. So there's a lot going on in the rest sector, especially the issue of linking all the geopolitical zones with, the, with dual carriageways. The federal roads in the Lagos area created a great challenge, but as expected of a non-discriminating leader, the president swung into action and one particular project that was quite tasking was the popular Third Mainland Bridge. It has since been fixed. There is also the repair and replacement of expansion joints at Eko Bridge in Lagos, as well as maintenance of the Jeba Bridge in Kwara State and many other bridges across the country. However, one bridge project which is most likely going to be one of the legacy projects of the Jonathan administration is the Loko Oweto Bridge a gigantic infrastructure sprawling across the river Benway. It is a bridge that will turn the economic fortunes of that area around. The array of agricultural produce currently wasting away in Benway State will have easy exits into the eastern part of Nigeria when the bridge is completed, and it is already over 70% complete. We were able to also accelerate construction work on the new bridge over River Benway in the local uh, the local way to bridge. Uh, as we speak, construction work on that has reached about 65 percent completion. Uh, beyond that, the, the Benin Ore Shagamu Road, the first two sessions of that project have been completed. Uh, Mr. President graciously commissioned that particular, uh, those sessions of the, of the projects in that those state. And we are very happy about that. In fact, I was privileged to drive on it last weekend to Okada, and it was a beautiful drive. And Nigerians that drive on that alignment, they readily appraise the transformation that has taken place there. But by far, the project for which President Jonathan has been singularly commended is the Second Niger Bridge, which is a major link between the southeastern part of Nigeria and all the southern parts of the country. This is a project over which all previous leaders had vacillated, but a courageous and focused president, Jonathan, picked up the gauntlet and flagged off the project. The project involves the construction of 1.59 km dual carriageway bridge with six lanes and 10.31 km of dual carriageway approach roads. Already, work on the link roads to the bridge site has commenced. You have seen for yourself, even before what is going on, uh, you've seen a lot of stockpile of uh, pie casing, uh, which is not easy. I mean, a bridge infrastructure is not what you buy from the shelf. Uh, or not to so many people. Such a huge infrastructure needs a lot of, uh, uh, you know, a lot of time to accomplish. And for us, the past one year has been very eventful as far as the second Niger Bridge is concerned. Following Mr. President's flag up in March 2014, a lot of activities had gone on. In fact, there had been a lot of early work that had gone on, uh, leading to the procurement of all these pie casing. I mean, these things are not available in Nigeria. They have to be ordered from Europe, and they're all here. Today, you can see what is going on, uh, where the pipes are being driven. The piling work has commenced, dredging work has commenced. We see a number of dredgers on the River Niger, you know, nature here, and that's at the end of it too. So for us, it's a thing of joy, as the pipes are being driven, certainly before the next rainy season, we have driven in a lot of pipes, and people will begin to see the structural elements of the bridge begin to spring up. No doubt about it, infrastructure project the world over requires a long lead time for you to be able to do it because there's a lot of planning, design, engineering, and financial structuring uh, that is involved. If it were easy, ask the APC government of uh, Bola Tinubu. 14 years ago, they, they touted the idea of a light rail project for Lagos. 14 years on, where is the light rail project? That is just a light rail project for Lagos. Talking Talkless of such a massive infrastructure project like the Second Land Bridge, where you virtually have about six lanes running from Asaba end to the Onitsha end, with another level 0.9 kilometers bypass before Asaba airport, 
that will continue across the road from Bonita to Owere and you have a clover attaching at that point and also continue to the road from Onita to Enugu where you will have another clover attaching. So it's a mega project and you can see we have moved faster than anybody in history as far as public-private partnership is concerned and we are very glad Mr. President has expected it and you heard him in his own word he said he's very pleased with the progress that has been made thus far. It is difficult to quantify the economic benefits of this project to the eastern and southern part of the country. However, it is not difficult to imagine that it will open up the business potentials and transform those parts economically. For all this an iconic bridge and that is why in the design you are seeing some major landmark elements, you know, because it's not every time you build a new bridge. The old bridge was built the same year I was born, it was about 50 years ago. So we have another opportunity to build another one, so we want to do it really good. So what you from the change of design, sir? There was no change of design. What we did is that having finalized the structural elements of the design and all that, we also we decided that this is an iconic project. Sometimes it happens once in a century. And we wanted to make it more eye-catching so that it would be a, a monument to our nation and also a monument to the people of the Southeast. I know that, that this will lead, this, this project will have a lot of multiplier effect on the economy because turnaround between factories to the marketplace will be drastically reduced and that will lead to more productivity in the economy, more jobs will be created, a lot of people will be engaged. And don't forget, even the corridor, the corridor as it is today, the corridor is virgin. Once this project is completed, it will open up new economies along the corridor. So, in a way, it will help to increase the gross domestic product of the country. Of course, the socio-economic impact of um, the bridge is uh, enormous. Um, be an agrarian community, you know that um, accessibility is very key. First, in terms of um, getting their products to the right market, to the market, in terms of uh, getting all the implements they required, also to their uh, farmlands. Um, in, and soci um, uh, socially, in terms of uh, mobility, in terms of uh, being able to be part of the larger society in the state and in Nigeria as a whole. Dr. Goodluck Ebella Jonathan, PhD. An educated man knows the benefit of quality education to national growth. Twelve new federal universities to improve access. al Majiri school system to reduce the menace of miscreants. Innovative programs and policies to improve quality of education. All equals exponential growth in school enrollment at all levels. Funding of education has never been better. From 224 billion naira in 2007 to 634 billion naira in 2014. President Jonathan knows that education matters. That's why education transformation is work in progress. Don't stop the wheel. Vote wisely. Vote Jonathan. Vote PDP. Now, many have wondered why the Jonathan administration has succeeded where others have failed all these years. It is simply a function of a strong political will and the determination of a leader to make a difference. With this, it became easy to embark on a road sector reform designed to yield results. Some of the radical road management policies are abolition of the use of cutback bitumen, MC1, and its replacement with bitumen emulsion, which also freed kerosene for domestic use and promoted environmentally friendly road construction. Introduction of a new project management template that makes provision for the valuation of only permanent works in interim statements and certificates, thereby deepening performance management approach to road development and mitigating frequent augmentation of projects. Establishment of an engineering design office with modern facilities at the headquarters of the ministry to guarantee quality of designs and effective supervision and the establishment of the six independent ministerial monitoring teams to ensure standard and quality of road projects. The ministry has a team on every site. Every site has an engineer's representative that has a team that uh, ensures that the works are carried out to the specifications for roads and bridges. Works are carried out according to the standard conditions of contract. So works are done 
and properly supervised by the ministry's team on the site. Each team on the site has uh, testing equipment to ensure that the quality materials are used. And on top of that, we also have uh, pavement evaluation units in uh, different parts of the country that will go again to confirm what has been done by the team on the site. And this is done before payment is made. Before the establishment of all these labs, the contractor was doing anything, well, he just had a free day doing anything he wants to do. But these days, knowing fully well that one day the PE will come. And like I told you before, we carry, we open the pit, we dig the pavement to take measurements. Knowing fully well that us is not just passing, you know, flying across the road and uh, writing whatever report we want to write. They are always up and doing because they know that one day will come. And the, the Honorable Minister has always been in support. That is why we have uh, in Bill Number 1, there's provision for us to go to site. So we do not have any reason not to go to site at any point in time. At a time when there is paucity of funds to build the much needed public infrastructure, road construction and rehabilitation have not halted. Rather, the pace of work has picked up tremendously. And this is because of the ingenuity of the Jonathan administration. Its public-private partnership in road sector management has led to the successful takeoff of the second Niger Bridge linking Onicha and Asaba, being undertaken by the Nsia Julius Berger Consortium and the Apakun Oshuri MMIA Expressway in Lagos State, being undertaken by Czech Consortium. What's interesting is that the federal government will only bear 30% of the total cost of the second Niger Bridge, while the other 70% will be financed by the private sector participants in the project. The landmark achievements of President Jonathan in the provision of road infrastructure has reached a point of conviction, and they show the president as a man who is faithful to his promise, a man who is willing at all times to make life easy for the people. 1.3 trillion naira per annum wasted on food importation before the Jonathan Agri transformation. From rustic farming to mechanized agriculture, from corruption ridden fertilizer distribution to improved and timely access, from wanton wastage of food produce to innovative marketing reforms, commodity exchange and storage infrastructure. From food insufficiency, Nigeria is set to become a major food exporter. Youths now embrace agriculture. Food imports slashed to less than 700 billion. The transformation is unprecedented. Jonathan is work in progress. Don't stop the wheel. Vote wisely. The roads across the country have never been this good. President Jonathan deserves the credit and commendation, but most of all, he deserves to continue and complete the good works he has started. Jonathan is work in progress.